Leah, the, the first thing I suppose that, that we should talk about is your conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, not because a conversion is unique, but because a conversion by uh, somebody who's blogging about atheism <laughs> is, uh, is not very common. Mm -hmm. And just to ensure that I understand where you're coming from, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase my understanding of where you, from reading your, your, your blog about it, that, mm -hmm. that you initially, you, 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 it came from that you believed that morality is objective. Yes. And independent from mm -hmm. humans, and that, that mm -hmm. was your, your, the core difficulty that you had was fitting that into your overall philosophy of, of, of yeah, it Yeah, was, it was a problem of my atheist friends, not all of them, but also had a difficulty with where they said I was kind of letting the side down by making this claim. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you found that, so a lot of atheists were saying that there's... Well, no, a lot of atheists among my group of friends in yeah. college. I didn't take a national poll. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I've had a lot of friends who are interested in postmodernism who were making more of a claim that claiming any morality was objective was too strong a claim for, you know, basic epistemology to sustain. And, and your opinion that it is objective, and in what way would you define it being objective? Sure, the, I guess, least jargony way I'd say is that morality is something we uncover, like math, yeah. um, not something we build or design, like art or architecture. Um, so it's something you can study, and when you're studying, you're not creating out of whole cloth or out of your own thoughts any more than physicists are creating string theory. They're uncovering yeah. a more elegant and beautiful way to describe the world around us as it actually is. Yeah, so you think that there there is something that mm -hmm. is morality? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and, and presumably then is it, that, that sounds like uh, the Platonic ideal form. Yes, yeah, I used to describe myself more as a Neoplatonist before I crossed over. Yeah, so, so it, it would be, in, in the context of, give us a comparison, I mean it would be the equivalent of Tableness or hoarseness. Or yeah, but, but basically it's that. ness Yeah, a good a good table is a table that tables very effectively. It doesn't drop things. It's level. Yeah. Um, and a good human is someone who humans very well. And part of that is not treating other humans as objects. You know, reacting with charity towards others. Yeah. That's part of morality. Is really the process of describing for a living rational being what it is to participate most fully in the form of humans. Okay, so wait, now, now Burma, mm -hmm. we're, st we're still talking about what you were thinking mm -hmm. when you were an atheist. Mm -hmm. So you would have seen it as, is, does that sound like it's, it's an objective description of a property of humans or an objective entity independently of humans? I would have said it was just describing how humans functioned without really speculating as to why or how they functioned that way. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you, you were finding it difficult to, to fit that in. To ground it, really. To, to, to ground it mm -hmm. with some philosophical or metaphysical underpinnings. Right. Okay. Um, it made more sense from the Platonist perspective of, you know, kind of the problem where once you're positing transcendental ideas or forms of how you come to know them, you can kind of cheat a little with math, where you go, well, how do I come to know rectangles? The form of the rectangle, I go, well, yep. you know, I look at, you know, this object, um, and it's kind of a rectangle, and I can see how it resembles a rectangle. And it's harder to make that argument when it comes to morals, which are just a little less clean and sharp and easily turned into short formulas like the Pythagorean theorem or something. And, and when you say harder, harder to make it concise mm -hmm. or, or harder to understand? I think probably, well, I mean, I hear a lot of people complain about math class, so maybe not harder to understand. Harder to understand actually in the same way that it's hard to understand the concise formulas. Most people aren't facile with calculus in their day-to-day -day life, but most people can catch a ball that's thrown at them, which yeah. is thinking about change over time, which is all calculus is. You can work with it in your day-to-day -day life, but once you formalize it, the rules that describe what you already know are confusing. With morality, most people, you know, and, uh, what's his name, Bloom at Yale has done research even on the ethics of babies who would prefer to give their treats to the toy that shares when they see a video than the toy that didn't share. Yeah. Um, you know, and, indeed, some non-human animals do things like mm -hmm. that as well. There are yeah. monkeys that will, if, if they can't, if, can't figure out putting a, a token into a slot to get food, another monkey will do it for them and give them the food that comes out. Yeah, I'm a little more reluctant to generalize the monkey studies just because we have less access to what they do later versus babies, you know, again, I don't want to generalize too much mm. from the studies, but we at least get to talk to other humans later and hear more about what yeah. their decision process is, whereas the monkeys, we never get that access. Yeah. Um, and there's such a tendency to anthropomorphize anth animals, it's so tempting that I just always want to be a little modest in claims about animal psychology studies. Um, but, in the same way that you can catch a ball, most of us know how to treat other people with respect, you know, at the broad level, without necessarily being able to formalize all the rules about how we're doing it. Yeah. But we have such an innate, strong sense of it, the same way you do of, oh, that's coming at my head, duck, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you were, but simultaneously to mm -hmm. this, while you were trying to figure out how to ground your 
sense of objective morality mm -hmm. with some sort of a metaphysics that you didn't yet mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. um, you were also, studying is probably too strong a word, but you were also examining Catholicism. Yeah, um, mostly for the purpose of arguing with people, actually. I'd, <laughs> I'd come to college and I'd met much smarter Catholics than I expected to meet, and I thought, oh, yeah. you know, these people are smarter than I thought, I'd better read up more so that I can explain to them why they're wrong, which right. I was doing. And what were the strongest arguments and weakest arguments that, that you found at that stage? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, still, still thinking as an Yeah, so some, some are almost just arguments that I thought were strong. Not that they proved a system was true, but they made it more coherent or resolved difficulty. Um, in the same way that, this is perhaps a slightly ridiculous example, but when people were reading Harry Potter and they'd run into inconsistencies yes. in the text, um, and people would kind of try and come up with the explanation, oh, Marcus Flint was a seventh year in the first book, but here he is again. Maybe he was held back a year. Yeah. The difference between wondering whether there's an explanation or going there's an inconsistency and then hearing yeah. what is actually going on. Um, so some things were just Although, although ar arguably Harry Potter uh, doesn't have the assertion that it was written by the creator of the universe. No, but it does have a, you know, god of that particular universe who sets the canon. Um, you know, you have the word of God from J.K. Yeah. Rowling, and then you have kind of speculation the same way that you have the Bible, and then you have theses by uh, theology mm. grad students, which are scriptural fan fiction in some ways. Um, yeah. Really, uh, sorry, I have friends who are in theology grad school, so I should say very well-researched, meticulous theology fan fiction. Um, but yeah, so part of it was just hearing some of those parts of the explanation. So there's a, you know, parts of the crucifixion just had never made that much sense to me. I'd mm -hmm. heard mostly the slightly more Protestant flavored um, explanation of it as, you know, either a fair exchange you know, or a debt yeah. where you know, God needs to buy our freedom back with himself, and it sounded odd. Um, and I'd heard a different part that's more um, common in Orthodox and Catholic theology, which is the Christus Victor uh, story of Christ who dies to free us from death. And I, I still like math analogy all the time, so yeah. the way I interpreted it when I heard it was just kind of a, you know, Christ who cannot die went through death, entered into hell, who cannot, you know, it's logically almost impossible for him to be in hell. And I thought, oh, it's like a divide by zero error. Uh, yeah. For death, yeah. you throw in this function. You throw in this argument that the function can't actually hold, and it breaks. I went, okay, that's a non-crazy explanation of why the crucifixion was important that I had never heard before. Right. Someone was just fleshing out the world and going, "This is more well thought out than I thought," which, you know, in retrospect, is not entirely surprising, given that you have two thousand years to think about it. Yes, and, uh -huh. and to either evolve explanations or or. or drop things that right. don't fit in. So it, it actually, like, it pointed to two things. One is that it was slightly more plausible that Catholicism was true than I thought, but also that I'd underestimated how true it should look either way. Right, mm -hmm. okay. But you, and your, your, your bridge then mm -hmm. from uh, thinking Catholicism seemed mm -hmm. marginally more plausible mm -hmm. but not yet true, mm -hmm. and, and your, your desire to have something that made everything coherent mm -hmm. internally for you uh, seemed to have been from your blog post a discussion with somebody about where you grounded your morality, where, where you, uh, as far as I can make mm -hmm. out, out of nowhere, mm -hmm. came up with the idea that, that, that uh, morality is a person. So I wouldn't say my desire to make everything coherent. It's my desire to live according to my current best hypothesis of how the world actually works. Okay, um, okay. There's a difference between, you know, because there are parts of the world that aren't always coherent as we're looking at them. The whole parts of, like, supersymmetry theory that people are fussing about still in physics. Yeah. Um, so you don't just, uh, when you're making practical decisions, most of those don't come in on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Um, when it comes to ethical decisions, more questions kind of come up day-to-day -day yeah. that I actually have to act on. So in every moment, I'm really choosing what I currently believe in most, what's my most plausible explanation or model of the world. And I don't think that's you know just a desire for, I'd like everything to be tidy. You know? Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, but just, uh, well, I have to make decisions. I want to make the most accurate decisions I can. Um, and so it was a shame like that. My most plausible model changed, not just my most aesthetically pleasing model. Um, yeah, but, but how did... Nihilism is kind of the most aesthetically pleasing model, right? It's like neatest, tidiest, has the fewest assumptions, horrible, but like... Yeah, but how, 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 if you don't know, how, mm -hmm. how did the idea of a person come into it? Because one of the mm -hmm. things that, 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 uh, that I did when I read mm -hmm. that, I thought mm -hmm. that's an interesting mm -hmm. idea, the idea of morality being a person, so I thought... Mm -hmm. But let's find out sure. what people are saying about morality mm -hmm. being a person. It's a little Google, Google search mm -hmm. for the term mm -hmm. uh, morality as a person. Mm -hmm. And the only things I found were reference to you saying it or reference to people talking mm -hmm. about you saying it. So, so this idea, it seems to be completely unique, the oh. idea of morality being a person. So how, how did, mm -hmm. like, what, 
for you, what is a person and yeah. what attributes of a person does morality so have? The, the main smallest attribute I was thinking of was just an agent that is capable of acting and choosing. Um, so the difference when we talk about Platonism and, you know, the form of tables we don't think of being active in any way. It's just almost the cookie-cutter factory model, all yeah. tables resemble the table. But the Ur table, the Platonic yeah. table, has no relationship with all of those tables. And the problem I had was that I was, had knowledge of a transcendental, this morality, um, like I had knowledge of math, but I couldn't come up with a well, same can, can, can I just clarify, before you go, can I just clarify, when you say you had knowledge, you had uh, belief rather than knowledge? Well, I have some, you know, knowledge, here's the way I would put it, when I see you, right, yeah. I receive impressions of you without willing them, uh, without, yeah. and I can say I assent to the idea, I believe in the idea that I see a person, yeah. but mostly I just receive an immediate impression and have an immediate sensation in my mind of yeah. a person, red shirt, etc. Yeah. Uh, when I see someone kicking a puppy, I don't go, what are my beliefs about puppy kicking from first principles? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, I have an immediate sensation of injustice, you know. Uh, there's almost as though there are receptors in the same way. Okay. Uh, and, you know, uh, Jonathan Haidt talks about kind of, and again, there's, I think a lot of psychology is like slightly neuroscience is a little speculative, so I say he has a hypothesis that there are some kind of intrinsic circuits in his yeah. mind of, you know, things that respond to loyalty, people who respond to um, like purity as primary moral factors that fuel your decisions. Yeah. Um, so so what, what attributes, mm -hmm. again, then, you, you mm -hmm. capable of making a decision? Yeah, it was just active. Rather. It was just active versus being the factory model, what I thought about personhood. I was just thinking a agent, really, something that acts in the world, something that maybe has desires or and moves, And you said that really. Yes. Uh, well, so what I was saying was that, you know, and I didn't plan it, I didn't say it. I said it, then I just thought about it. Um, it was the first thing that came into my mind, and then I thought about why I'd said it, and it was that if I had knowledge of a thing that's not like tableness, um, in that it seems to have reached to me rather than me to it, I haven't constructed the way I would, by yeah. induction, come up to it, and it reached, I'm describing something that's active uh, rather than stable, inert. That's really most of what I meant by person. Um, and I was being sarcastic when I said it originally. Well, I guess it just loves me or something, you know? It just, like, yeah. reaches, like, it's not on me. And I thought about it, if you describe the form of the good in platonic terms, like, reaching to someone to give them knowledge of it, that's a more an act of love than anything else. Well, do you, uh, uh, actually, there's another question I'm going to come to. I want to go back to something you said earlier on, mm -hmm. when you were talking about the dangers, in your mind, of anthropomorphizing mm -hmm. um, monkeys. Mm -hmm. Is it not even a bigger step to anthropomorphize concepts like morality? Oh, yeah. I mean, I also wouldn't take it very far in that, I don't know, I wouldn't say, you know, morality is peevish morality. It's just that what I had mostly was, you know, I use the language that I know best to describe yeah. things. Um, sometimes I use much more abstract language and then no one knows what I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, what I had was just a relation. Yeah. It's like the simplest, purest word, a relational thing rather than just a knowledge-based thing. Um, and that surprised me. And I went but but it, was, it, 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 it was pretty significant because mm -hmm. it was your bridge from... from mm -hmm. From not just thinking mm -hmm. about, we're writing about and analyzing, mm -hmm. and, and in a very intellectually rigorous way, all of these concepts, mm -hmm. um, to to that your that your bridge was something that 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 was of a very different nature. It was just a a realization in your mind that morality is a person. There there doesn't seem to mm -hmm. be any given that your quest initially is for a coherent underpinning. Mm -hmm. I, I can't identify what you see as the underpinning mm -hmm. for the realization that... So I wouldn't that say my quest was a coherent... A coherence is more than I think is achievable in one okay. lifetime. I'd say it's for a less incoherent, like, which is actually a difference in the, okay. you know, I expect, unless I'm... Honestly, I expect unless I make a very interesting wrong choice that my understanding of the world be slightly wrong and have kind of jangly bits that don't quite work. Yeah. And my goal is to find them and resolve them if I can. Um, right. And, you know, if I can't try and figure out what the best way to go forward is, but... To get a completely coherent moral or ethical system, usually people do it by throwing out the baby with the bathwater, period. Yeah. Like, uh, G.K. Chesterton has the bit in Orthodoxy about how solipsists have extremely coherent philosophies. Everything in the sure, world yeah. is shaped by solipsism, yeah. and it's just a stupid philosophy anyway. Your coherence is important, but it's not the only important thing. Yeah, so, but, but, but it's, well, they take so it as less coherent. Yeah, so, so there, there's, there's, there's a moving, criteria that you were Yeah, it was moving towards more things. coherence towards me. It was, I have this problem, um, I don't know, I have both transcendent, a knowledge of a thing that's transcendent, that's inert. Which thing am I least certain of? You know, which thing do I have least confidence in? Because, you know, I'm not certain of any of them, but I'm varying levels of confidence in each. I'm least certain about inert. 
And would you say then, when you say, if you say morality mm -hmm. is, is, is a person, is, mm -hmm. is that that morality, all of morality is a person, or that good is a person and bad is another mm -hmm. person, or, or how, yeah, how so does I, that work so out? So I would never extrapolate an entire theology from that statement alone. What happened yeah. was when I said, it's a person, I would look around for which person it might resemble if there are other stories. And in fact, I had a candidate available. Um, you know, they do talk about uh, various theologians in history about God is, you know, the union of the good, the true, and the beautiful. Um, and there's no reason to necessarily posit just from that alone that uh, negative forms have personhood or anything. Um, there's obviously a lot of theology on God and the devil throughout Christian history, but I'm not an yeah. expert in any of it. So. But, but in, independently of the theology, because mm -hmm. at this mm -hmm. stage you're, you're an atheist mm -hmm. with a pretty rigorously mm -hmm. intellectual approach mm -hmm. to your atheism and to your philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. And the new thing, we haven't yet got on to mm -hmm. becoming a Christian, mm -hmm. the new thing is that, that you have come to believe that, that morality mm -hmm. is a person. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in that context, what examination of the, the, the person, or do you, do, you, do you jump straight to religion from that? Well, mostly I jump straight to, I'm not going to think about it that more that night exactly. <laughs> like, it was, you know, quite enough to be going on with, and I... Yeah. Honestly, I thought, yeah, that's one reason I didn't tell anyone I'd changed my mind for a bit. I went, well, let me sit with this idea, let me see if I think it's true. Yeah. Having interesting ideas that are kind of cool resolutions that feel like they're solving a problem doesn't yeah. mean they actually are. So I sat with it for a bit. Um, but you, you, you prayed that night mm -hmm. with, yes. with your friend. Would that, mm -hmm. would that not have reinforced it rather than... than uh, well, I mean, if it weren't true, I don't think it would reinforce it very much. Um, yeah. It seems like very polite to do if religion were true and minimally harmful if atheism yeah. were true. I mean, I've been attending Mass anyway, and that's kind of a physical act of prayer, but, you know, I've been attending Mass so that my boyfriend would go to ballroom dance classes with me, and that didn't right. seem to... So finally, religion powerful. has a use for an atheist. <laughs> it was... I thought I couldn't lose, right? Like, he has to learn the steps. Yeah. I didn't have to do anything besides show yeah. up and practice my sight reading, technically, for the songs. But, yeah. yeah, so, you know, it did seem like... It was certainly what I wanted to do in the moment, and, you know, there's some level of, oh, commitment effect, you did a religious thing, or you can be religious forever, but... I mean, number of people who have been religious who have deconverted, you know, suggest that praying once would not lock me into a worldview forever if the whole world mitigated against it. Yeah. It's just what, mm -hmm. what, what it does seem, though, is, is uh, to an outsider, mm -hmm. is the combination of, uh, of participating mm -hmm. in and, and, and um, immersing yourself is probably mm -hmm. too strong, but, but, but uh, certainly researching and participating mm -hmm. in, in Catholic uh, events mm -hmm. while you are... Uh, thinking this thing through, then when you have that realisation, mm -hmm. you seem to have gone straight to, straight to saying, and there's one church that mm -hmm. seems most consistent with this this mm -hmm. new, um, I was going to say coherence, but that's what you said, mm -hmm. you aren't saying mm -hmm. this new, less incoherence, mm -hmm. yep. that, that Catholicism, that you, you mm -hmm. seem to jump straight to Catholicism, so did you examine any other ones after that? Um, well, I've been examining it a bit before, just that... Catholics weren't the only people I picked fights with during this time and then did yeah. more research on for the sake of fight picking. Um, so, you know, I've been, you know, they were some of the main people just because um, a lot of them enjoyed fighting with me more, which yeah. jumps you to the front of the line in my view. Um, but, you know, I've been arguing with postmodernists. I had friends who were Marxists. I had, you know, friends who were um, minarchists or like, wanted us all to live on boats in the middle of the ocean, free from the laws of the state, and when you're angry with someone, you like leave your... And I thought that was an interesting idea, but like not a very necessary idea. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think if you tell the story, it's just you read about Catholicism and then picked Catholicism versus you, like, had fights with everyone who had fights with you. And, you know, honestly, there are some ideas I discarded faster. Um, I had an argument with one person who said, oh, well, you're relying on the law of non-contradiction. I just don't believe in that. I went, I just don't know how far I can pursue <laughs> this investigation at this point. Um, so I'd say I fought with a lot of people, and I tend to fight both most of the people who were most interesting, yeah. or the people I thought had the most chance of being right. And, you know, sometimes there was an overlap between those two people. I have, I have a friend who really likes this philosopher, Bernard Mandeville, who's horrible, like, really horrible, thinks all actions are only motivated by vice, and we should just, like, engineer the vices so that we don't all kill each other, but sees nothing redeeming in human nature at all. I like arguing with him because I have to think very hard to do it. I encounter arguments I don't often expect. I've argued with him for a long time without becoming any more convinced that he's yeah. right. Well, um, well, if you look at the world objectively, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. still an atheist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, from an atheist perspective, if, if you do look at the idea of God, even if mm -hmm. you accept mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. um, that there is a God and that this mm-hmm. God is conveying morality in, so, in some way. Um, the idea that it is a, a good God mm-hmm. seems to hinge on arguments like, uh, well, you know, he gave us free will mm-hmm. um, in, in order to explain why we can do evil and mm-hmm. uh, how can we understand the mind of God. But it's, it's just as rational to suggest that there's an, an all evil God who wants us to do evil and the only reason that there is good in the world is that he's given us free will because he wants us to do evil voluntarily rather than force us to do evil. So I mean, the, the, that argument mm-hmm. that there is an evil God is, um, unless you have a prior commitment to there being a good God, that there's, there seems to be no reason based on observing the world for suggesting that it's a good God rather than an evil one. Well, one thing that... There or, or a neutral one. Yeah, so one thing that there is, and this is weak evidence, uh, not you know a clincher, but... We notice in ourselves, you know, a desire to do good things, a shame of doing bad ones. Mm. You could say, ah, you have a massive, you know, uh, sorry, a sadistic evil god who wants us to do exactly, evil, yeah. but wants us to feel terrible all the time about doing it. And for me, that just starts to move towards the level of the solipsism thing, where you come up with a story that does work, but doesn't seem to have any actual adherence. Um, no one, you know, solips. You almost never meet a solipsist, first of all, who just goes, ah, no one around me actually exists, so I can stab people when I want to. Um, you almost never encounter someone who goes, I just put some, like, if you actually thought that we lived in a world created by an evil god who wanted us to do evil, who was going to take actions based on our actions, it'd be mm. worth putting in, I don't know, a week, a month's worth of time into thinking about how to propitate that evil god, right? In the same way you put some time about how to think about how to placate your boss. And I meet almost no one who says, oh yeah, you know, once I thought that was a live option, I really spent some time thinking about what I could do that might make the evil god treat me better. Yeah, no, um, I'm not suggesting that people uh, in, in any great numbers do believe that. I'm saying that if you observe the world mm-hmm. and you apply reason to the evidence of, of the apparent evidence of your senses, that that there is no reason other than, mm-hmm. as you say, it's personally more satisfying or, or, or Well, no, or I think the fact that people troubling. don't take any action, again, is weak, not conclusive cl- cl- evidence, that when people look at the balance of evidence, they do actually find themselves tilting in one direction. And part of that is culture, um, and I don't mm-hmm. think all of it is culture. Um, and I think that people find more fruits, which, you know, is once you try going down the path a little way, find more fruits in pursuing the idea of good God who wants good, than anyone does find as they try out, hmm, evil God that pursues evil. What if I did bad things and felt even worse? Would that please the evil God? Would it, like, bestow whatever its versions of blessings are? Yeah. It, well, the difficulty is, of course, that, mm-hmm. that with most theologies, mm-hmm. that, that, that whatever, mm-hmm. let's hypothesize that there is a God, mm-hmm. uh, even if there is a God, mm-hmm. How are we to know anyway? Mm-hmm. All that we have is our subjective beliefs about that God, even if it exists. And get, particularly given that an organised religion has vested interest mm-hmm. in, in propagating itself, it, it will nuance its stated beliefs about the God in, in, in order to, to propagate itself. Yeah, and I think that honestly makes you know sorting this out very hard, um, which is one reason I don't at all argue... You know, I, I, had, I had a friend in college who would go like, do you believe in beauty? I can lead you to God. Like, let's have lunch. I thought that was... Crazy, and it's a crazy yeah. assertion. Um, yeah. Even if he's right, it's not the case you can do it over lunch. It's not the case you can do it to people's satisfaction. So, you know, I don't think I'm a, some great apologist who has a knockdown argument for God, like half hour TED talk, and we're yeah. there. Uh, just enough to make it worth being interested or picking up like another book or going to mass with a friend and then deciding what other evidence you want to weigh. You know, I think there's actually a very Weird parallel. Do you know the quantified self movement in like the weird techie whatever culture? No. So there are people who basically want to do end of one experiments on themselves, which is definitely not the best way to do experiments. No one would say we should make medical policy for a whole country based yeah. on that. And yet, by kind of tracking things about, you know, I try sleeping this amount, I try taking this nutritional supplement, I try not eating this food, you can still learn a little about how you yourself work. Yeah. I mean, the tests are never double blind, so it's definitely sucky science. Everyone agrees. Yes. Yeah. It's just slightly less sucky science than not looking at the question at all. And as long as you approach it with a bit of skepticism of, well, I'm trying to see how I react to this, you know, and I keep in mind that it's just not super strong evidence. So when I say, you know, being a Christian and praying like tends to make me think better about other people and behave better towards them, I don't think at all that's an argument that should make someone like go to their priest today and say, baptize me right now. I think yeah. that it's weak evidence that like slightly reinforces my decision. In the same way that the person doing quantified self, you know, who, there are people who just like put a stick of butter in their coffee and think that that's helpful and they have like some interesting papers on the topic. But they also say, well, when I do it, I seem to do better than when I don't. So like that clearly does point me in a direction, but not a direction where I've mandated it for everyone else. And, and what in Catholicism, mm-hmm. g- given, that, mm-hmm. given that your bridge mm-hmm. was the idea that morality is a person, mm-hmm. 
and given that Catholic teaching mm -hmm. is not that morality is a person. Mm -hmm. But that morality uh, how, is Christ Jesus. How, how do, well, it's, it's not that morality is, but that the Catholic mm -hmm. position is that morality is following Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's a process mm -hmm. of following Jesus. It's not that it is Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, how did you move from a from a realization that, that, that from from your bridge of morality as a person to a religion that doesn't teach that morality as a person? Well, so I still it's I it's slightly contested, and I think you're kind of giving my one phrase too much explanatory weight. So. Catholicism does teach that God is the ground of all being and all goodness, which is like very close to... Like, this is why uh, some of the church fathers ended up basically, what people say sometimes like baptizing Aristotle and Plato, that they found a lot of good in them, of someone describing something imperfectly, but that a lot of that language was helpful. So the idea that God is like the good, but not in a boring tableness way, is a strain of Catholic yeah. theology. I, I, I don't think it's unfair mm -hmm. though, Leah, to... Mm -hmm. to to use that phrase, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not as if it's just some random person wandering down the street mm -hmm. going, no, morality is a person. Right, right, right. This, I'm this, saying, this is your bridge yeah, yeah. after after a regular, rigorous oh, yeah. intellectual journey. And I'm saying journey. that the person is God and Christ and you know the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. Yeah. Uh, you're asking why I'm, I'm, I'm asking, that person. I'm asking, yeah, why did that person, particularly mm -hmm. given that the ch not, not even just Christ, but mm -hmm. to a particular church that doesn't teach that morality is that person? So again, I think I'm just, I get to your first question, I don't want to contest the second part still. Okay. I don't think saying that, you know, God is both goodness, but also not inert, which is really most of what I was saying, is a contradiction of Catholic theology. Catholic theology says many more things besides that. It's an adding, not a taking away. Like if so I said I'm, that I'm your shirt is, now, if I said your shirt is red, yes. I think you said, no, Leah, my shirt is made of cotton. We haven't disagreed, which just described two different properties of your shirt. If I say that God is like the ground of all goodness and God is active, I've actually not so you know, I, contradicted I, that. So is it is, is your suggestion that that, that mm -hmm. be, because the Catholic Church doesn't explicitly say uh, morality is not a person, therefore it it, it may be consistent with Catholic teaching? Uh, so I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. I'm saying that Catholicism does say that God is the ground of all goodness yeah. and that God is active and that like. What I said, which was like a very brief statement, was just expressing that goodness was not inert. Like, goodness in the platonic sense is not inert. I said such a small thing that it very easily fits into Catholicism. I didn't, like, have 95 theses I nailed to a door. Yeah, so, well, but you, you did have one thesis <laughs> that you nailed to a blog post, and, and it was your, your, it, it was your bridge. I mean, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't... Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying... I understand I, why you would think that well, it was well, so well, significant. Yes, I'm just not really understanding where the contradiction is at all between... You're, I mean, no, there's not a contradiction between believing mm -hmm. it. I mean, if, if, mm -hmm. if you believe that morality is a person, then, yeah, sure, uh, then you live your life on that basis. Mm -hmm. But but uh, that, that you maybe you would try to identify mm -hmm. other religious options mm -hmm. that come closer to saying mm -hmm. that God is a person. If, if, mm -hmm. if, if at all you want to mm -hmm. link yourself with a particular mm -hmm. religious movement rather than just have a, have a belief system that is coherent for yourself, mm -hmm. le less incoherent mm -hmm. for yourself. Sure. Uh, also, if we're going back to the why add the other stuff Catholicism brings besides yeah. my initial idea, part of it is that it does a good job of telling the story of how or why. Uh, part of it is, again, that I spent like more time reading about, you know, not an expert, but you know, more time reading a little bit about the historicity of the Bible and what people did believe who are scholars yeah. who are, you know, and mostly what scholars all believe is that they disagree with each other, but, you know, weight opinions have like some weight, no weight, etc. Part of it is like participating in a lot of religious arguments among my friends who came from different backgrounds and seeing, you know, again, a bit of the coherence, less coherence yeah. of what they appealed to or where their arguments broke down. So, you know, you know, just the sheer number of, you know, kind of Protestant, Protestant arguments where they end up having nothing to appeal back to. And so just the intense splintering didn't seem very yeah. plausible on the face of it. You know, it's less plausible that if there's a religion that's true, that it's a religion that almost divides through an endless process of mitosis into all these thousand flowers that hate each other, uh, right? But and do you see the process mm -hmm. in terms of, of the Christian Gospels mm -hmm. or the Catholic Gospels? Would you see those as, as, as human stories or as, as truth?